record in the series of five July learning series and this one is SMS alerts. This is a new feature for us and Matthew is our guest speaker today. So welcome Matthew. How you doing? I'm um, I'm here. I'm ready to go. So um good. Glad to hear it. It's all <laughs> yours. Okay. So I wanted to talk about uh um text messaging alerts or, or SMS alerts uh today. Um if I can get control again of my slideshow. First, I wanted to hit on the requirements of this feature. You do need to be running uh, Student Manager 8. Uh, I forget when we added this, probably somewhere in the teens for the version. So 8.0.015, I think, and newer. Definitely just get the latest one from your technician if you're if you're in doubt. Um, you will need to get a Twilio account. Uh, that's just twilio.com and they're the ones that we are piggybacking this service off of. And they do have rates. They, they do charge for this service but it is much cheaper than a, most other places that I could find. They do charge you one dollar per month or the phone number that you get and this is the cheap plan that I'm talking about that you can go up and get um, if you don't want just a, a regular phone number if you want an 800 phone number then it's two dollars per month to have that if you want one of those six digit short codes I think the rates for that start at like three thousand per three months for just the phone number so yeah you can you can spend quite a bit of money if you uh, um, if you needed to to have that stuff uh, available uh, but then there is a three-quarter of a cent per message charge for each one that you send um, most places are charging around five cents to ten cents a message so I thought three quarters of a cent per message uh, was was well reasonable uh, for this service. Uh, the next requirement is that you need to have the cell phone number collected on the name records for the people that you want uh, to send text messages to. Um, there's also a new field that's the opt-in field right next to the uh, the cell phone number field. Uh, on the name record and I will go ahead and show that um, if I look up a person here and on a new name screen you got the cell phone number field kind of right dab in the middle just maybe under uh, the middle of the screen right next to it is the opt-in SMS uh, check mark box uh, so you can manually check that if you're uh, you know, seeing somebody in person. This can also be added to your person.awp in ACE Web so that people can opt in on when they create their accounts on ACE Web. But uh, speak with your technician on how to do that. Uh, I think we do have some code in help for you to do that as well although I could be mistaken about that. Uh, once you do get a Twilio account, uh, there's just three basic settings to put in and you just need to go to Tools, uh, Database Admin, SMS Settings. And it's whatever phone number that you got from Twilio, if it was an 800 number, you'd put that in. Um, six digit code is going to look a little weird, but yeah, you just put in the six digits here. Uh, for this, um, but yeah, the the uh, I just got a seven eight five number because in in my part of Kansas that's the that's the area code uh, here, so that's what they gave me. Uh, the other things you need to put in the um, um, SMS settings here is in the account number Twilio gives you and the auth or authorization token, and I've got it masked out here, but. Uh, um, 
yeah, you, you'll get it plain text and you can just copy and paste these in, hit OK, and you've got it set up. Uh, there are a few additional files you need to put in place and your technician can, can get those for you to, to, uh, to do this. Um, and those files are what, what make the connection actually possible. Um, any questions about any of that that I've covered? No, it looks like you're doing pretty well. Okay, so we've gone through the requirements and the setup. Now what can we do once we have um, some, some people opted into text messaging and things like that? Well, one of the first things I'm going to cover is being able to send a text message to an entire class. And this is a brand new button on the course quick reports area. Um, let me get, uh, da -da -da -da. I'm trying to remember which course I've got set up to do this. Um, da -da. So send SMS to class is the button down here. So if I click it, uh, it does come up with the, the uh, a filter if you if you've maybe you've already sent a text message to the class you know about something important but then you know somebody last minute comes in and registers so maybe you only want people that have had an ad date greater than a certain point uh, you can do that you can manually select people or you can just say all if I click the select um, it does show all the people to select from uh, notice there's a deselect people with SMS here. I think that oh that's for something else um, that works better for. But um, yeah, I can't. I don't remember. I don't. I don't know why it's showing up here. That's for something else. But anyway, um, law of programmers giving a webinar is that something goes wrong. And this is the one little glitch that apparently is going wrong for me giving this presentation. So um, hopefully it's limited to just this one. But anyway, I can uncheck and, and check who I want to send a text message to. Um, if I just leave all three and hit done, it is actually going to then filter out people that don't have a text message or don't ever have not opted in to getting a text message. So at, for this course, it says nobody in this report uh, is getting an SMS message from me. Now, if I go to a different course, I'm trying to know, MIS 405, I think. See, this is also another problem. I have been messing around with my demo data right up until the webinar, so I don't remember now which course I have set up for which example. Um, da, da, da. Is it this one? This better have it. Nope. Okay. Abandon. Let me just find my person real quick that I know is set up with a text message. Actually, I, it looks like I'm not the person. You can Maybe find Jenny you. Call. send me a text message. I would be very happy to hear from you. <laughs> well, I don't want to unnecessarily do this um, or, you know, send too many here. Course is taken 15WA010. Okay. If I zero one zero A, I think. So I've got my Jenny call in here, or maybe not. No close. All right, let's do this. Let's just put Curtis Martin in. Da -da -da. In. Okay, so now if I send a quick report,
court to or send SMS to course. I'll just say all. Now it brings me to a window where I can enter in uh, an actual SMS. And there is um, with a there's the load template here that would allow me to set up and grow. Uh, well, I'll talk about that later. But uh, we can load in templates uh, for the subject. Maybe forgot glasses. And this is just for the CRM record. This is not sent out with the text message. And so with the uh, actual message, um, you forgot your glasses in class. And probably a good idea to sign this somehow, um, because otherwise they're going to get this from some random phone number and not realize who this is that's sending them the message. And once I hit send, that is going to get fired off. One message sent through my Twilio account out to, well, since I put my phone number on Curtis Martin, it's going to uh, my phone right now. Um, so that I will get that text message here in just a moment. Um, so that's one of the ways that we can send and as, as a text message. Another way we can set up, um, uh, you know, student reminders for or course reminders, uh, and this is actually piggy, piggybacking off of the email student reminders routine. So if you've got that set up to uh, to fire when you log in, then this will also work. Otherwise, you can go through tools, uh, email student reminders. And the new option that comes up, um, well, I didn't set my course up properly. Email student reminders or email reminders to students. Um, now I should be able to go to tools, email student reminders, and it pulls up the course that uh, I just checkmarked to, uh, to do the reminders. Click done. The new option that comes up here is I can do email only, SMS only, or I can send both from, from in one shot. Well, we, we're just doing SMS on this webinar, so I'm going to do SMS only. It comes back to this same box that we saw for sending an SMS to an entire class. So now this, you would probably want to set up some sort of template to pull in you know, something like the course code or course short name um, and the begin date and say, hey, the the your course is coming up. Uh, I do believe I'm missing it, uh, or it's not active. Um, when this gets installed, I believe we have the ability to import a sample one that Cheryl has built. Um, so yeah, when when you um, get with your tech, uh, ask ask about that, and we can set that up. Um, since I've already talked about templates a couple of times, might as well show you where those templates are set up. And this is very similar to email templates. If you go to module, um, catalog, SMS templates is right under here. You know, just a few down from email templates. So you set up your SMS template um, code. Let's do SMS remind name this the name also goes into the subject of the text which is then put into the CRM um, subject for this um, so if I want to put reminder for upcoming course and then I code this COCRSC -E is the course number I'll want to concatenate then uh, 
is starting starting quote plus ah plus and then I'll want to convert any dates to a character so I'll use the DTOC function and copeg date and then I'll put at the end of this quote period a swear systems because I want to sign this and say who it's coming from because otherwise they won't know who it is and that's it very simple little text message uh, notice the note down here if it does generate out to be uh, more than 160 characters the message will be truncated so if you do co-course in M which is 95 characters or we want to all trim it trim um, 95 it can be 95 characters long that's taken up a good chunk of your 160 characters and I don't know here if we've got a we've probably got a short enough message here that it will be fine but if you want to use the co um, the short name you know the short title uh, you can use that code instead so here's a little bit about setting up the templates any other questions at this point can the student reply to the message? They can reply to it, uh, and that does go into the Twilio um, system. And then the uh, um, you'll just either I have it set up that my Twilio is set up with an auto responder that says, you know, this this account is unmonitored. If you need to contact us, please call. 800-925-2493, you know, so they could call the office here to talk to us. Uh, but you, you, if you do have somebody that's willing to, you know, go in, you know, every once in a while and, and look at those messages, you can see what the, the uh, students are sending you uh, if they do respond to messages. Any other questions? Not at the moment. Okay, emergency SMS, and this I think this was the big thing that got us started with um, the text messaging, is being able to tell your students, hey, the the uh, courses are are canceled for the day because of a huge snowstorm or you know water main break or something like that. You need to be able to tell your students uh, quickly and easily that that you know, classes are canceled or something else, God forbid, shooter on campus situation, you know, things like that. Um, so this was this was the basis of that. And this is just through uh, going to Tools, Emergency SMS. And this pulls from the room use all the courses that are meeting on a specific day. So if I want my emergency sent out today and I don't think this is going to pull up any courses but if I hit OK yeah there's nobody nobody set up for courses today but um, so then that would bring us back to that same um, SMS box where we can type in on the fly or if we do have some sort of template set up for uh, for this type of situation uh, then then uh, you can load that template in as well um, so I'll go on to the next one. Send SMS to an individual, just kind of like sending to a, a uh, an email to one person. You go into the, that person's record, double click on the cell phone number now instead of the email address, and that pops up this the same um, SMS window. So if I go back to Curtis Martin. Okay, double click on the cell phone number, voila, I can tell him. So instead of, you know, using the broadcast to the class, to which he was the only one in, but uh, now I can tell him just personally, hey, you forgot your glasses uh, in class or, you know, something, you know, 
pertinent and important for him to uh, to see right away. Um, and obviously, you know, how how important are these things? Well, is it worth three quarters of a cent to send? Then send them a text message. If it's not worth that to you, send them an email. I think that's that's my basis anyway. Uh, we can send a text message to everyone listed in a report. Um, maybe there is, you know, something. Um, I don't know if this has an example of sending a happy holidays message to a bunch of people in a report. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's some other situation where the um, uh, emergency SMS message wouldn't work. Maybe you want to send, you know, you know, the next two days because of construction or something, you're shutting down a building. We'll want to set up a report to pull everybody that's taking classes those two days. Otherwise, there's going to be people, you know, that are in courses both days. If you just sent individually, some people are going to get it twice. So you'll, we'll want to set this up on a report to pull in multiple dates and then send them to, to all of those people at once. And I've already talked about setting up SMS templates uh, just through module catalog SMS templates. So a uh, little bit of a summary here. I think that sending SMS messages is is you know cheap easy we've we've set this up to be fast uh, for you to to get it done and I think that by doing this you're keeping your students informed and that keeps them happy happy students keep coming back again and again so any other questions on the on the board there Lori yeah, we have a couple minutes, so if you have a question, it's time to post it to the question answer box. In the meantime, are you billed by Twilio for incoming texts from your students? Um, I want to say yes, that it's the same three quarters of a cent, but you'll check their their website. Maybe it's a half a cent or something, but yes, I do think that incoming texts from your from students are are charged. Now that that auto responder that I was talking about, I don't believe I am getting charged for that auto responder. So, but check with Twilio's uh, rates to be, to be absolute certain. Okay. And is there some sort of a code for do not reply that can be set up before the SMS message appears? Um, I mean, you could. Just type in your message, do not reply, or at the end, don't reply, or something. Um, but then that's taking that's eating up your your 160 character limit. So yeah, you got to watch that. But yeah, you can. You, I'm going to chime in. I'm going to chime in here, Matthew. Good job on this. Uh, the question about the responding. If you start this as a school. Um, I would think you'd be sending out a mass email blast to all of your active students saying, hey, this service is available. Uh, like I said, you may be getting messages that don't reply, send an email back or whatever, um, so that you kind of you know, let your students know this is happening, obviously, uh, in, in your information. And uh, you can actually build that out as an added service that you're offering you know, to your students. So. That'd be my that'd be my suggestion. I was going to ask while I got the mic. Um, would you raise your hands, participants? Raise your hands if you have already uh, got a Twilio account and are beginning to experiment with SMS messaging. So I'm just curious. Um, I think Brittany. I would think you'd be on that ball on that. Are you are you running yet? Come on, come on. So raise your hand if you have already begun to do any SMS mess. All right, not seeing. Not seeing anybody right now. So, all right. Well, that would be, like I said, it's uh, available to you. So, as far as I know, I think there's only been a couple of schools take advantage of this. Okay. 
Uh, this is only, you know, this has only been out since January, yeah, and uh, yeah, a few months. So sure. Yeah. Um, all right, Lori, back to questions. Anything else going on there? Um. No, no. Everybody's just saying no. They haven't tried it yet, or. Brittany's saying that, that no, she hasn't tried it yet. So I think we're about <laughs> I'm picking, with the question. I'm picking on Brittany here. So. Um, That's okay. Well, very good. Well, Matthew, good, good job. She'll get you back. And um, again, if you like this one and you are saying, well, I do a lot of email, then next week is the one. I don't know if we've got the slide for next week at the end of this, but um, automatically or give you a special tool for making pretty uh, HTML emails. So that is next that is next week's webinar this time HTML emails. Again, you can be in your flip flops and shorts and make some whoop de doo nice emails. So uh, and we'll look forward to having Sharon do that. So we are excited about that. So and I am super excited to share that new tool. It is fabulous. <laughs> cool. All right, Laurie, I'll let you wrap it up. I think we're all done here. I don't see any final questions. Great job, Matthew. Thank you so much. And we'll see everybody next Wednesday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.